thank you so much for taking this call on, on such a short notice. I love the spontaneity. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we're all sitting at home anyways, right? Exactly. <laughs> My pleasure as usual. So how is life? What's happened in your life in the last three weeks? How has your life changed? How has it affected your team? What's, what's going on? But probably as most of you, uh, we are now working from home for the last three weeks. I think for me, it's not very difficult because uh, in my team, we are used to work a lot with the market. So we have conf call every day. So we were not working only on site, but also lots of sites through phones and conf call. So it's still okay. Uh, I think the fact to be at home is not bad as well because you have much more time with your kids. I have, I'm lucky because my kids are 17 and 15, so they are not disturbing me every five minutes except asking me some advice for the printers behind me. But otherwise, it's okay. And I have also the luxury to live in a campaign. So I'm living in a huge farm surrounded with fields, with animals, so I can get out at any time to have fresh air, even for a walk, without disturbing anyone. So, so far, I'm, I'm starting getting used to, to this. Let's be honest. Yeah, okay. Well, hey, listen, on a farm, I think it's definitely much better than if you're in the middle of a city, right? So. Um... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Knowing where you are, I can imagine. <laughs> so, uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about, you know, what it is that you do with your team. How do you, like, so obviously you're used to this whole, you know, digital setup yeah. and working yeah. remotely and all this, but um, what's some of the biggest challenges that you had to overcome with your team and what is it that you're currently working on? I mean, one of the big challenges is that I have a team which used to be physically sitting with me in the same office. So you know that for sharing, let's say, communication or any news, it was quite easy. You don't need to have any call plan. You can just go to the team, share in five minutes, it's done. So now we have to introduce a little bit more disciplines, like, for example, having regular catch up during the day. So if we need to share something together, we have a time for doing this one. We have also to play, and this is normal, we have also to play with the ability of those people because I have the luxury to have kids which are already like old, if I can say like this, but I have teams, members who have kids which are very young, so they have to deal with this. And I'm super open to this, super happy. I was, I will say, a young parent before as well, so I know this, so I have no problem. So we have just to deal with this, mm -hmm. finding the right time for us. And of course, we may have to cope with last minute changes or emergency, like, oh, I don't know, my kid is sick or he cannot wake up at the time we were expecting, so I'm late. But we get used to this one. But mm -hmm. what we try at least is to have at least one day call with the team just to have a quick catch up. And as we work in a sprint uh, approach, we keep working in the same way remotely. We have our sprints well defined every two weeks, so we know what to do. And as long as the stuff is done, we, we are happy and progressing. Mm -hmm. I think what you're saying right now is super interesting because, you know, I'm actually, I, I like it a lot. So what ha what's happened in the past is that all of a sudden, you know, somebody's son or daughter walks into the call and they start, you know, talking or saying something and then they go again and they, oh, uh, or it, yeah, hap the it, hap the it, it happened to me just yesterday when I was in a call and suddenly my second daughter jumped on me in a panic mode because she was not able to send uh, a document to one of the professors through her uh, email and she was like panicking. I said, uh, I'm already on a call. Can you just wait five minutes? <laughs> you know, and she, she, she don't even notice this, you know, but it was fine. But I don't have those small kids, you know, uh, just jumping on me. What I can be more disturbed with is with my, as I told you, I'm living in a farm surrounded with animals as well. I have five cats and it's very regular that one of my cats can just show up during the call, either jumping on the desk or on my side just asking for food. So uh, hopefully it may not happen during this call, but we will see because I can hear them. They are turning around. Hey, I wouldn't mind it. So I had a call with somebody else, the, the CEO of Teleboy, and he has cats at home and he's like, it's impossible to have conference calls. Um, they jump yeah. on the table and when they hear voices, they don't know it, that it's a call. So they get curious and they want to see what's going on. So yeah, I, I just have the impression when I, I look at my cat that they are just wondering when I will leave again, the home <laughs> so they can have all the farm for themselves, you know, because they are not used to see all of us all the day in the, in the house. That's exactly what he said. So maybe going back a little bit into the topic, what's your yep. biggest advice? So this is obviously, the reason why I initially started this yeah. whole conversation is because um, I want to give, you know, some relief to small businesses and maybe also just to, to, for people to share their story, right? So yeah. um, to the extent that you feel comfortable, what is some, you know, advice that you can share from yourself, maybe to small businesses or to, to colleagues or to other companies, something that has maybe helped you or in terms of communication or whatever it is? Uh, 
if I look at the habits we have in the team, and I have also tried to force a little bit my daughters to have the same habit is, first of all, think about this day as a normal day. So just wake up at the normal time. So don't wake up at 9, 10 or 11, just wake up at seven, like we used to do. Have a shower, get dressed like you were going to school and start your work as a normal day because it will also help you the day when you are back at the office to not have like a huge cut. You know, like you start getting used to wake up at 10 and suddenly you have to wake up at six again as yeah. it is my case every day. So this is the stuff that we are trying to promote and get dressed, huh? which yeah. means that don't come like with a pyjama in front of, of the screens. Then regarding the business, try to make as much as you, you can. But we used to say in the team, priority to family at the moment because it's very important that you have to take care about your family in those challenging moments and uh, this is uh, i would say the second uh, the second uh, tips i can i can give uh, if i look at the third one is also to make break that means uh, you know that wearing those devices all the day when you are like for the seven times on a call during the day you are, you are starting to uh, not cry, but close to crash. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell to my team and I'm trying to do myself is I want well to have fresh break. Even if you have just a small balcony, balcony, go to the balcony, have fresh air, take 15, 20 minutes break. Don't, and this is very important, don't try to accumulate all those calls one after one because you will just, just crash. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is very important. But the most important of all of them is family, family first. I mean, you have to deal with your family. And this is what I'm respecting as well from my team members. It's more important than anything else because this is, an, let's say, this is new moment. This is challenging moments. Mm -hmm. And you can even benefit from, from them to be, uh, to be together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, that's, that's so true. I mean, I think family first, right? And as a, as, a, as a team head or as, you know, somebody who is working with a lot of people, you know, when you send out this message, you also gain trust with your team. And, you know, this, it's a fact. We all want to do our work and we all want to do a good job, right? And so if something comes in the way, yes. you have to, we have to give people the opportunity to take care of it properly. Otherwise, it's going to go, it's going to go in the wrong way. And, and we are using a lot all those, as you may guess, collaboration tool to stay in touch. And even in those collaboration tool, we have like a post-it somewhere where people can reflect at any time their unavailability. And I'm also reflecting my unavailability. So the team can say, okay, if the boss is doing this one, we can do this one. We have no concern at all. I say, no, because I have kids as well. Yes, they are 17 and 15 years old, but I have to prepare the lunch. I have to prepare, you know, everything from time to time. I have some time to transport them to some places because, for example, my first daughter is going to so uh, physio, physio session at the moment post-surgery, and this is still happening. So nobody else can carry on her, so I have to do it. So I'm taking a break as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, maybe we can talk a little bit about, you know, fast forward and what it is that yeah. we have been working there as well. So how can we, how has this Corona situation affected fast forward and what's your advice out there to organizations right now? So with fast forward, one of the pillar we have in fast forward is what we call the education. So all the training and certification we are doing for employees to get trained on fast forward, certified on fast forward and to have this mindset to think customer first and take the, the decision based on data. So what we have seen is uh, happening over the last three weeks, we have received more and more requests to get trained remotely, as you may guess. So uh, this is one of the big stuff we are working at the moment is even if we have a lot of stuff happening online through classes, not physical, but online classes is we are looking at what can we still, I would say, make online? Because we have still a few classes that we are doing physically. When we are, for example, onboarding new people in their role, like the fast forward builders, for the people who know fast forward builders is like the orchestrators in the market for fast forward uh, initiative. So we are trying to see how we can onboard those people online because we don't have at the moment the luxury to train physically those people. And the problem is that the world is not stopping. Those people keep working, keep asking for, they still have initiative and product because our business is still running. We are also going to all those new products. They are still running as well. And we are also deploying in our market consumer-centric organization, which asks those people to be further trained. So this is one of the key challenge we have at the moment is how can we transform physically training that we have in more online training. Even if we are used to this one, we have more and more demand for this one. This is one of the big challenge we are facing uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. What are your 
yeah, most important tools right now going digital because you know there's a lot of conversations going on around Zoom. We're using Zoom right now. Yes. Um, what are the biggest tools that you're using? I think we have seen an explosion of Microsoft Teams in our company because it was funny, we had some early adopters and we were progressively deploying the tools. But as you may guess, due to the situation, IT was kindly asked to accelerate the deployment. So those last weeks, they had to deploy more or less the tool to everyone and activate all the features. So today, it's more or less our main tool is Microsoft Teams. We keep using Zoom like you when we have massive call because we have seen that Zoom is a little bit more sustainable for massive call than Microsoft Teams. Otherwise, we do a lot of, with Microsoft Teams and also using Microsoft Planner a lot when we have to plan, for example, our sprints, when we have to report how we progress through our different cards within, within the sprints. And uh, yes, Microsoft Teams is definitely the tool we are using today with all the channel discussion, video call, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are the, you know, and I understand this is still very fresh, but yes. how do you feel that people are adapting to this? You know, there are these jokes going around right now okay. around, uh, you know, what digitalization didn't come from the CEO, didn't come from the CTO. It actually came from COVID-19. So how is this, you know, how is this affecting you and uh, how, how has this changed your life? I think we are lucky in a sense that for the fast forward initiative, as well as all our fast forward ecosystem, the world people are very used to those tools and we keep using WhatsApp as well for exchanging. So it's not super difficult for those people to move to the, that tool rather than another one. So we, we are quite lucky because it works quite, quite well. But I agree that for some other people, uh, we have to spend a, a little bit time with them to explain how to do this. For example, please stop exchanging emails. Everything is in Teams. Don't send your email. Nobody will respond to this. We will not be able to track any progress with your email. So this is the most challenging part we may see is to have this mindset moving from emails to something which is much more collaborative where you can really track what people are doing in a good way, I would say, and you can just follow the activity of the team. So this is the most challenging part we, we, have, seen, uh, we have seen so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I feel exactly the same way and I'm seeing the same thing, right? So the, the, the basics are there and people are used to these technologies already, even if they sometimes don't even know it. You know, we, we have WhatsApp, we have Zoom, we have yes. Skype, we have, we have all these things. And sometimes it's just that little notch that we need on top to start enabling exactly what happened in your case, where then we get access to all these different tools. Exactly. And I'm sorry to, to say that this situation, like uh, the coronavirus, might have helped <laughs> to have people moving faster on this one. Mm -hmm. It should have been something else, but it might have helped because you, that's the best way to stay connected and you might have no other solution at the moment. I like that because, you know, I, I, I'm like you, I, I like the things in, in positive terms. And there are a few positive things that came out of this. Of course, there's a lot of negatives. Yes. But, uh, the, one of the positives really is that it has kind of like jump-started and triggered this uh, digitalization trend and helped uh, support it. So this is definitely... Absolutely. Great. Last question. Uh, what's the first thing that you're going to be doing once uh, this whole thing is lifted? Is anything going to change in your life majorly? Are you going to leave your house a little bit more often or what's going to go? What's going to happen? For the time being, I'm still lucky because as I'm living in a farm in a campaign, I can easily leave my farm for a walk without disturbing, without meeting anyone. I'm just crossing my field and I'm reaching the forest. So this one will not change. I think the stuff that I will enjoy doing, and I can see this one every day, is to go back on my motorbike. Because I have my motorbike in my farm, and I'm a bit passionate about motorbikes. I have two motorbikes. And uh, this one is ready for the spring, but I decided to not use it because I say, I don't want to end up in the hospital and use the bed of someone else. Mm -hmm. So I took the decision to keep it in the barn. And when you see the weather like today where it's super sunny, it's cold, but super sunny, it's a perfect time to enjoy some ride in the mountain with a motorbike. I'm tempted to do it, but no, I keep it in the, in the, in the barn. So the first day where everything will be, let's say, better and where the number of patients will decrease at the hospital and they will not have the same pressure than today, I will jump on my motorbike for a good ride in the mountains. I love that message. You know, I think it's, it's really powerful to say that we're in this together and uh, yes. not put strain on the infrastructure. And I think right now is the time to really, you know, help each other out and be there for each other, even if that means staying at home. Yes, exactly. And even one of my team members, Ferran, 
uh, is helping startups in Spain to develop, you know, those kind of alternatives to um, breathe, breathing systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want, have a look at this uh, website as well, which is called Oxygen uh, mm -hmm. Proxify. It's really a good uh, alternative. And uh, yeah, but for me, motorbike, I'm still looking at it and I will really enjoy the time when I can jump on it. So what does Oxyf uh, Oxify exactly do? So so what is oxygen doing so oxygen. it's a no no sorry so it's the name of the of the um, of the project so what they have done is trying to be able to develop an alternative to those huge and costs very expensive systems that you have at hospital and they are running out of those devices okay though so, so at the moment they are producing two variants one which is much more dedicated let's say to a high hospital where they have all the space and where they can put the, those uh, alternatives and they have also developed one that can be even produced at home you can print uh, yourself the spares and uh, this is probably for hospital where they don't have all the luxury for those systems so they can print and create their, their own device so it's to support what's happening as you might have seen today in italy in spain where they are missing those devices so you have seen that there are other uh, projects doing this one so i'm super happy that one of my team members has jumped on this and he's helping this team uh, to build this. So at the moment, the device are ready. They have been tested. They are just waiting on the final certification in Spain to be able to start equipping uh, some hospitals. So this is also a way to participate to, uh, to this fight against this virus at the, at the moment. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing this at the end of this call. I will definitely add that as a link to the, to the post. Yes, I will send you the link, the, the correct link. Yes. Sounds great. Vincent, thank you so much for taking the time. It was a lot of fun talking My to you. My pleasure. And I hope next time it will be in person again. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks for your call and thanks for this opportunity. Yeah. Take thank care. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.